Alrighty, my fellow YouTubers, it's Science Room 101. So, um, I just posted up the video that was using uh, half of my NST 7500 volts, using my Variac going into my Tesla coil. Now, I just wanted to show you guys uh, how to pick up the the I would call it Slayer, but it's it's um, it is what it is a transistor Tesla coil, I rather call it. So I have a different setup here. I drop down the secondary to about a quarter way of the length of the um, secondary there. Uh, I have a transistor, full wave bridge rectifier, RF choke capacitor coming off of my Variac coming out of the wall. Here you can see the light bulbs lit up. Here on top here you'll see just a little little flamey do coming out as a signal okay I got these two light bulbs lit up let's go ahead and check the frequency we're at right now we're gonna go to 100 Hertz and right now we are sitting at about AM band about 1100 Hertz okay and obviously over here you can see my LED is not lit up I ain't got anything hooked up to it but other than this group of wiring I got a pickup coil going right here a little antenna up in the air I got my LED I got my air capacitor and we are picking up, up here we are in the 1200 1300 Hertz range and let's uh, tune this coil I'm gonna have to do this with one hand and turn this until the LED lights up LED just lit up very bright by the way so I just tuned this coil let's see where we're at with tuning this coil let's see if the no we don't want 200 Hertz we want no killer 100 Hertz so right now we're in the same thing the 1200 AM band and we got this LED tuned sitting outside here out of the building Okay, you know, there's the light over there for the trans, the transmitter. We're tuning this coil right here. You can see the LED lit up very bright. Okay, let's go to the other end of the building here. We're going to come over here to this coil. And you see they're different sizes, so tune in each one to that frequency over there. And here we're sitting hertz-wise, we're still in the 1200 range. The LED is not lit, so let's go ahead and see if we could one-handedly turn this one to the LED. You can see if the LED lights up. Where's the LED? It's somewhere over there. I'm going to turn this. If I can do this with one hand, a little tough. Real tough. All right, LED just lit up. You can see now. I got the LED lit up, got my little antenna, so this has got a little antenna, this is now tuned to the uh, transmitter over there. Now this is, I like this better because I'm not using um, all that spark gap, there's no spark gap here as well. Now we're just basically tuning into the frequency of uh, this tesla coil and you know what it takes a lot of know-how to get this to, d to work it, um, um, you know i won't, don't want to let the cat out of the bag for everybody if you know what's going on more power to you um, as i displayed it's easy to make sparks uh, let's go ahead and see if we could uh let's check the frequency on this 
and we'll see if we can move the primary around 100 hertz. So right now we're at uh, still AM band, so we're at 1300, I would say, uh, on the AM dial. Let's go ahead and change. Now let's do this. Now I just disconnected that. Now let's go over here and check the LEDs because I have them tuned, right? So this LED is out. This over here will be out. Nothing going on, okay. And before, I guess I'm not gonna change the primary location. I'll just go back to where we were. Which, uh, let's go ahead and, all right, there we go. Light bulbs are lit up. Now let's walk back out. You can see the LED is very lit up. It's bright as heck. It's hard to see with that, but that thing is way lit up, okay? Now I can go ahead and put it out of tune. I know it's hard to do all this, but I can put it out of tune. So right now it's off. Let's go ahead and turn it so it's back on. Right now it's back on. So we can see I can tune and untune this. And this is really good because there's, this is, this is where it comes down to knowing how to follow. You can see that this one's bright and this one's on. Okay, and it all comes down to knowing what frequency you're running at, uh, tuning your coils. So obviously I got this trans or this uh, transmitter set at uh, 1300 hertz. So in the AM band, now let's go ahead and change the primary. Let's go a little closer. Uh, won't do nothing there. Won't do nothing. It's too close. So will it won't at that one, it will at this one. So now let's check the and see if we increase or decrease or if we're at the same. Let's see, we're looking for hertz. So let's get to 100 hertz. There we go, 100 hertz. Now we're gonna check the frequency. And we're still in the same band. So even moving the primary around doesn't change the frequency because the frequency is based on the harmonics on the secondary the way i have it set up a third of the way so the field is going up collapsing coming back down the bottom half of that of that secondary is helping push back up the field and the um the transistor is finding its residency with the coil which this one is sitting at about 12 to 1300 hertz so uh, I got this one over here. Now you can see that the bigger diameter of the wire uh, and some of the other characteristics of this uh, really um, does apply. Now, no matter what I do to this, this will not go on. Uh, I might be able to hook up a, a makeshift antenna to it. Let's see if that does anything. But I don't think that it, mm, no not seeing anything uh i do have this set up here this is my little and i got a green light lighting up and you can see that uh, it only lights up when this coil is uh, close by it won't light up anywhere out here because it's not in um, residency it's not lighting up out here because it's not tuned to the setup here with an antenna and a uh, wouldn't call this a tank circuit but it's definitely a way to resonate and tune the coil so this coil here in my hand will not light up and that's what I kind of I've been messing with for a long time is not knowing how to tune your uh, wire so this group of wires this is 15 feet 26 gauge a wire so this 15 feet if you do the math you'll find that the resonant frequency of that 15 feet doesn't fall in line with the um, the am uh, hertz uh, 1200 1300 the 1500 hertz band um, you can also see that if i move this away you know it's dropping out around mm, 
I gotta say around here, I still see it on about here. So we're a good four or five feet away. So we got some distance there. So guys, um, you know, I put this out there for you guys out there that who are messing with uh, Tesla coils. Um, it's okay to see the big sparks and stuff, but I kind of look at now the the ones that are out there who are actually running electric motors more than a foot away or a couple feet and the ones who are tuning uh, their coils to uh, go along with. You can see how bright that light is. That's crazy bright. And it uh, feels empowering. I'll tell you what else feels empowering. I woke up today and my power was out. My subdivision had 150 houses out of power, okay? Well, I called uh, FTNL to see what was going on. Thought maybe my bill was due and something happened and power is out for everybody. And what did I do this morning? I'll show you. And it's very empowering, guys. I, I do have the solar panel, so I'm constantly charging my uh, 12 volt batteries through solar, which free energy, right? So I hooked up uh, one of these batteries I took and I took this uh, inverter here, which is a uh, 2000 watt power inverter, brought it in the house and made coffee, plugged in my window shaker air conditioning, and I watched some TV and put on my internet box. And um, truthfully, all I did was plug it into the inverter, even charged my cell phone. So that was very empowering to know that regardless of what happens around me, that um, I still had some control of my life. Jesus Christ, to wake up in the morning and not be able to have a cup of coffee from my coffee pot? I wouldn't say it's devastating, but I would just say it's very disheartening to know that you're in the mercy of a power company and even a freaking tree lean, leaning on a power line can fuck your day up. Pardon my French. Look how bright that light is. So anyway, 12 minutes of your time. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Um, you have any questions on how to tune stuff and break out of your workshop on your little slayers. Uh, there's more to lighting light bulbs up uh, within a foot or two or three away. More than then having little sparks. Um, right now I'll display um, in a couple days, I guess. I got my workshop down there. It's got a metal roof. I'm setting it up right now. I can pick up the LED down there, which is a hundred and I'll say 40 to 50 feet away. Uh, I'm using the, the roof as an antenna. I got my makeshift uh, Alexander Array antenna there uh, with some tank circuits built into it. I'm gonna make a control box down there um, using um, several grounds. I would just say uh, not to let the cat out of the bag, but it takes more than one ground and more um, more ways of using ground to make something like this happen. You can see like how far that is, how far this is. Inside the building is the, the transistor Tesla coil. And um, yeah, and you can actually use uh, earth ground. You can use a virtual ground, which would be uh, some kind of metal plate of some sort. But we'll go over that another time. Right now I'm working on um, um, several patents on wire, wireless transfer inside your house on different uh, apparatuses and uh, I know mean, Wytricity has something that's more of an RF which to me is shit because you're bound by maybe 8-10 feet because they found some residency in a magnetic uh, pulse. Uh, to me, that's that's child's play. Uh, this here uh, basically takes like a radio frequency and transfers it into power, um, and uh, it's a different beast than what you see out there normally. And here you can see this capacitor here is the same one I had on top of the Tesla coil. It's it's a wine bottle on the inside, salt water, oil on top. I'm using it right now. Uh, to um, as kind of a medium 
uh, for this capacitance, uh, I would say impedance from the ground and from 